Good day to all. Welcome to Extreme Recap. Welcome to Extreme Recap, everyone. A priest frozen for north of 100 years, at last awakens and should figure out how to dominate the four components to overcome the fire country armed force that is obliterating the whole planet. We'll go over the plot of the 2010 movie The Last Airbender today. On this planet air, water, earth, and fire are the four major forces that rule the spirit and the world. In every nation. Each has a partiality for one of the four components, except for a solitary individual, the symbol. What's more, every manifestation is brought into the world in an alternate body and country. But always learns to master everything in the Southern Water Tribe, including her brother Sokka and Katar, the last clan leader, following the tracks of some seals as they hunted for food. Underneath the ice of a frozen lake, something begins to glow. Curious to determine the cause of the effect. Soccer grabs his weapon and starts pounding the ground, causing several cracks to open, compel them to flee and prevent them from falling into the freezing water. A huge sphere of ice starts to appear all of a sudden, and inside it we can see a glowing person who is afraid it is a Fire Nation trap and slowly retreats. However, Katar strikes the enormous sphere after stealing her brother's weapon, which delivers an impact of frosty air that thumps her back. A large vessel from the Country of Fire, passing by, seizes the large beam of light and decides to go to the village to investigate as the globe begins to shatter. Near the tribe, it appears as if it were a beacon in the sky. Katar approaches the crater that has formed after the sphere has been completely destroyed, where it discovers a small boy and a massive bison. The boy, who goes by the name Ang, is extremely weak as they approach him, so the brothers take him to the village, where he can stay until he regains his strength. Anne and Katar have a brief conversation back in the village, during which the boy explains that he left the air temple in the south a few days ago and needed to go back to his home. Outside, the populace can see the huge fire country's boat drawing nearer from the skyline and envisioning a potential battle. Sokka conceals the youthful ones where Aang was, alongside the soldiers. The fire lord's son, Prince Zuko, appears and requests that the elders be brought to him. After that, a few of the soldiers start looking for the elderly inside the huts, and one of them goes right where the kids were. When he understands that there could have been no senior there. As he turns to go, the man however, he walks over to him to remove the red hood that Anne had placed over his head. When the man notices Ang's tattoos, which are the marks of an airbender, the man is surprised by the strange tattoos on the boy's head and decides to take him to the prince. Zuko feels obligated to assist the mysterious boy, so he decides to take him to his ship. Kyuatara manages to persuade Sokka that they ought to go rescue him because they were the ones who found him. However, they discovered that the boy's bison, Opa, can float when they started to wonder how they would get to the boat. And before they leave, they decide to use him for the rescue. The brothers go to their grandmother to talk to her, and when they do, they find out that those tattoos are from airbenders, something that hasn't been seen in over a century. The elderly woman says that the last avatar that was born was supposed to be an airbender, but no one ever found one. Zuko and his uncle, General Arrow, perform a test on the boy by placing a lit candle, making the lady believe that he is the current incarnation of the legendary spiritual warrior who finally appeared to save them from the tyranny of the Fire Nation on the ship. On the table, a stone and some water. After seeing that the three items respond to Aang's presence, he formally finished the assessment affirming that the kid truly is the symbol and has the ability to control the four components. As a result, Zuko decides to transport him to the Land of Fire as a prisoner. However, the boy resists and uses air as a means of escape. When I got to the deck of the, Nanshi Sokka and Katar showing up with Appa. He also transforms his staff into a glider and creates an air current that carries him to his friends when the fire army traps him. He returns to the southern air temple with his brothers to meet his friends and masters. However, when they get inside, the only thing they find is a bat that was a flying lemur. The boy assumes that the other monks are in the prayer field and runs there when they don't find them. But when he gets there, all he sees is a huge pile of bones. It turns out that they knew the next avatar would be an airbender, so they just left him there. The priests tried the four components on every one of the young fellows. When Aang found out that he was the generation's spiritual leader, he refused to take on such a responsibility and fled the temple with Appa. As they passed the southern water tribe's sea, 
They were caught in a huge storm and tried to protect themselves by creating a sphere of air around them. However, they still ended up falling into the water, where they remained frozen for the next 100 years following the boys' escape. The Flames Nation also invaded the Air Temple because they were aware that the next Avatar would be born there, found his former master skeleton and eliminated all dominators to stop the Avatar from getting stronger. Which he perceives due to the charm he made for him as a gift. Seeing all that war situation, the kid feels remorseful for having deserted his home, placing himself in a tremendous struggle under the surface and unwittingly entering contemplation in this state and figures out how to get to the soul world. What's more, there he experiences a mythical serpent-molded soul who is shocked to see the symbol. At the same time, after more than a century, Zuko is spotted on his ship by Commander Zhao, one of the military leaders of the Fire Nation. Zhao invites Zuko to dine with him, where he says the prince is a weakling, which is why he was banished, humiliating him in front of the entire army and treating him like mediocre bread. Zuko, furious at the invitation to insult him, attempts to attack him, but his uncle stops him. He then gets up and lets the administrator know that he will in any case be the ruler of fire. And everyone will have to bow down to him on that day. He remembers the reasons for his exile very well, after all. It turns out that a battle would result in the sacrifice of some of the prince's friends. Furthermore, after finding this data, Zuko shielded them and attempted to prevent them from doing battle as a type of discipline. The prince was given the order to fight, but when it came time for him to do so, the Fire Lord himself stood in his way, refusing to fight his own father. Zuko was scorched to stamp his disgrace and ousted from the Fire Country. Aang and the two brothers traveled through the Land Nation after visiting the temple. Additionally, as they approach a small village, they encounter a young boy fleeing firemen, being aware that the boy will be detained. Katar starts to control the water and attempts to protect him. However, there was no one to train her because she is the only dominator in her village. The only thing the girl is able to do is ensnare her brother in ice. Because of this, the three of them decide to surrender and are taken to the tiny earth village. Drinking sprees, which is currently involved by the fire country and filling in as a jail where everybody is illegal to utilize. Earthbending seeing the predicament of the populace. Angus starts a revolt and tries to get them to use their powers to fight back against the oppressors, and as a means of giving them hope. When they notice the boy's air powers, he turns out to be the avatar who claims to be there to rescue them. He is confronted by fire handlers who threaten to kill all airbenders as soon as the fight begins. Before, the boy who is being chased starts throwing rocks at the heads of the soldiers. Who irate send off a fire blow at him. The kid's dad raises an earth safeguard to safeguard his child. Starting a fight between the earth benders and the fire benders, which led to the military being kicked out and the people being freed after they freed the village and pledged to save other villages in need. That's what Anne uncovers, regardless of being the symbol. As he fled, he only learned to control the air. As soon as he learned of his abilities. Because the next thing they need to learn is precisely Kata's specialty, he didn't have time to train the other three elements. They fly towards the Northern Water Clan, where the best experts of this expertise are. However, on the way, they make a stop in a number of villages that are under the control of the Fire Nation, and they free all of them. However, this was to be expected. This bravery grabbed the eye of the Fire Country. As a consequence of this, Zhao dispatched spies to observe the Hang. After obtaining some data, the soldiers returned to inform the commander that the hangar only used air bending and probably had not yet learned the other elements. Knowing this, Zhao quickly accepts he is setting out toward the Northern Water Clan and readies his soldiers for the assault. And because he sees on the map that they are close to the Northern Air Temple, he decides to go there with Appa to see if they can get some assistance or direction. Be that as it may, when he shows up, he finds the spot totally annihilated. Additionally, a former temple visitor was an elderly monk from the land. The older person realizes that the boy is the avatar after a brief conversation. And because he is well versed in the area, he offers to guide him. A statue chamber with replicas of all the avatar incarnations is where the monk first appears. In any case, while he's respecting the craftsmanship, the senior behind him takes out a blade and many fire country warriors rose up out of behind and figured out how to catch him again. The Commander Zhao ship contained nothing but a chain trap. 
After getting rid of some guards, an odd-looking figure frees Ang when he awakens. The military began their search for them as soon as they realized their prisoner had escaped, and they soon discovered them engaged in a real battle. While fighting, the mysterious man in the strange mask uses his wind powers to defeat some soldiers and escape through a gap. However, realizing that his guardian angel will be caught and will lose his life, the symbol returns to help him. When Commander Zhao finally appears on the battlefield, he tells his troops not to kill the Avatar because doing so would only result in his rebirth in another location. Understanding such Ang's reality is the need for the military, the Veiled Moor Odd exploits the break and gets An, involving him as a prisoner to get away. However, as they finally leave the area, an archer fired an arrow that struck the man in the face, causing him to pass out immediately. Ang discovers that the person who saved him was actually Prince Zuko, the Fire Lord's son who was unconscious when the mask was taken off. The Avatar summons the clouds with all of his might, uses them to his advantage, and sends them against the soldiers who can't see a thing because of the thick fog. Exploiting the occasion, Ang gets Zuko and takes him to the center of the Timberland, where he takes him out and leaves. The prince returns to his ship, which, according to his uncle, was recently searched by Zhao's men, once he regains consciousness. Zuko hears a strange sound as he enters his room, and he realizes that the soldiers have punctured one of the vessels. Gas pipes, aware that he would die if he remained there. The boy tries to escape outside, but he won't likely make it because the explosion was so big. Well, Commander Zhao set this trap because he thought the masked man who helped Ang was Zuko. Ang finally reunites with Q, Atara, and Sokka in the interim. Together, they make it to the Northern Water Tribe, where he and Katar, along with a few other students, begin training in element bending, fully aware that Angel Presence is almost a declaration of war against the Fire Nation. While the Avatar steadily improves its water, the local rulers begin to prepare for battle. As Anne and Qatar practice in the icy fields on a subsequent training day, they observe that a significant amount of soot is beginning to fall from the sky. The massive fleet of the Fire Nation is approaching. As the war is about to begin, he asks Princess Yu to be the tribe's ruler. If there is a spiritual location in the kingdom where he can meditate and converse with a dragon spirit, he should go there to learn how to defeat the nation's soldiers. The princess then travels in agony to a cave with a lake and two fish representing the moon and sea spirits. At the kingdom's entrance, the Fire Nation launches an attack by entering from all sides and even through the ground. As well as playing out a few gunshots and, surprisingly, mounted on immense Kamado mythical beasts. When Aang starts to ponder, Yu and Sokka leave the cavern in Katara's wary, hanging tight for him to wrap up. However, Zuko, who managed to escape Jazz Trap and enter the village when they are alone, appears behind the battle starting girl. Despite the fact that she prepared a ton and figured out how to guard herself from her foe's most memorable blows, Katar doesn't have an opportunity against the ruler and is taken out effectively with the defender oblivious. Aang, who is still meditating, is taken captive by Zuko and taken to a secret location, where he watches the chaos outside. The dragon spirit in the spirit world says that if he finally lets go of his anger and guilt for his people's deaths, he will be able to defeat his enemies. Furthermore, that really at that time can he show the fire country the genuine force of water. After the discussion, when the meditation is over, Angry wakes up and realizes that he is trapped in another place. What's more, with Zuko watching him, the symbol attempts to get away, However the Sovereign notification his development, and they stir up some dust outside Qatar, who was awakened by soccer. What's more, Yu is strolling around the town attempting to track down them. The young waterbender goes there this time and takes advantage of the prince's distraction to freeze his entire body with A. Outside, the Fire Nation uses enormous flamethrowers and manages to melt the huge wall of ice that protects the city. She believes it could be Zuko when she sees signs of fire bending on one of the houses, after overcoming the enemy's defenses successfully. Zhao and General Arak travel to the moon cave and the sea. One of the spirits currently taking the form of a fish jaws plans to kill the small animal where the commander takes a cloth bag to weaken the water benders. Profound power, despite the fact that he is a dictator, the leader needs to gather the nerve to do this. Aang remained on the battlefield, attempting to stop the adversary, while Sokka Q, Atara, and you entered the cave to try to stop him. Advance. 
Zhao finally finds the courage to kill the moon spirit after seeing the trio, which immediately weakens the army of waterbenders. Immediately upon the fish's injury. When he realizes the gravity of the commander's actions, Yuanang lose strength, and the princess passes out from being closer to the water spirits. Conjuring his rage, General Iroh attacks Zhao and his commanders as he turns completely against his nation. Everyone, however, is intimidated when they observe the man's ability to summon the flames out of thin air. With the death of the spirit, even the commander makes the decision to flee, the Fire Nation takes the fight by storm, and the moon turns red like a blood moon. Princess Hugh regains consciousness and decides to sacrifice herself by entering the water and giving the moon spirit her entire life force in exchange for the moon spirit's body in order to restore the waterbender's strength and win the war, bringing it back from the dead. The commander, however, who is perched on one of the walls, is confronted by Zuko, who had run away from Iraqi combat and had lost her life in the process. Who surprised him considering that he thought he had killed the boy. However, just as the conflict between the two is about to begin. Taking advantage of the two retreating Zhou, the prince's uncle appears behind him and manages to persuade his nephew to give up the fight. However, the general easily repels his attack, and after defending himself, he retreats once more as the two leave. Behind the commander, four water masters appear and summon four massive jets of water. Following the initial blow, all of the liquid forms a huge bubble that suspends the general's body and causes him to drown in midair. The great sphere was demolished by the masters when Zhao was already dead, which causes his body to fall from a great height to confirm the commanding tyrant's death and put an end to the war, travels to the great wall, and finally lets go of his guilt. Creating a massive water wall that forces the entire Fire Country fleet to retreat to avoid being ensconced in it, putting an end to the fighting and revealing Aang's capabilities. In front of the legendary avatar, the remaining fire soldiers are in the bow of the water bender. Turn on notifications, please subscribe for more videos like this, and like the channel to support it. Thank you very much for watching.